Hi everyone, uh, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, I don't know where you are. Um, I'm Thomas Roussel from Pixelogic um, and today I will continue my stream. In fact, I will finish my stream about uh, the Kylo Ren lightsaber, something that we started together uh, quite some time ago. Um, and after I will switch to another project which is not related at all to that I will go back to my uh, what I really enjoy doing uh, in addition of course to cosplay stuff and props like that is figurine um, then it will be a two-part uh, stream uh, and about Karen in fact it will be just uh, showing some photos and explaining some stuff uh, because the model has been printed but I didn't have the time yet to um, to finish the painting in fact I didn't even start uh, doing the painting but uh, it should be done I hope this week because I need to send it uh, send it to Los Angeles for uh, in fact there is oh, hold on. Uh, phone is ringing and um, yes, I need to send it to uh, the main office of Pixelogic because we are doing a roadshow with Formlabs, uh, which is sponsoring this uh, stream for the Caloran uh, lightsaber, and it will be uh, presented during this uh, uh, this event, uh, especially showcasing stuff done with ZBrush and with the Form 2 printer. Um, then. Uh, about the model, I did nothing uh, since the last stream that you can find on YouTube and on Twitch, of course, uh, in the VOD section, the video sections. Um, the only thing that I did that uh, that to to fix mistakes, uh, because I printed my my model. You remember the last time I started uh, I started a print with the form two uh, directly, and uh, I did two mistakes. Then let, let me explain you which were these mistakes. Um, one of them is uh, one of them uh, was uh, you see this part just below you have this other part um, which was uh, in fact uh, the kind of cap for the bottom which go inside and then you have the opening and you have a hole which is going through the model directly and sorry Siri Sorry, it was my watch. Um, the problem is when I build that, you see this top cap here was a little bit uh, too wide, too large for this opening here. Then I printed both parts and I wasn't able to plug both um, um, parts together. Then I had to reprint this one by uh, uh, changing the radius of this opening from this circle. Uh, to be a little bit wider. Then I have an extra part. This is the first mistake I did. Uh, it's a small mistake, but well, you need to reprint some part, which can be uh, sometimes very annoying. And I did not want it to redo this one because of this opening here. Why? Because the main body here had a good section. Then it was fitting perfectly. It was only this part which I had to to reprint. Then reprint quite some some part. And the other one was about. Uh, this part, this one here, let me move it as well. And when I, I printed uh, uh, this model, in fact, I forgot to do the opening for the button which is here. Then it was closed. I had, in fact, a, a small uh, embossing from the button, but it wasn't going through the model. And as you can see, the button itself is quite thick. Um, then <laughs> it was one mistake, but the worst one was not this one because this one uh, I can always find a solution just to dig a hole or using a Dremel, 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 I don't know, uh, um, this utility tool uh, just to cut through the model. But my main problem was I just forgot to do this opening here, this one like that to fit this part, then it was not possible to fit at all the model. And I noticed at the same time that you see these uh, um, circle part, circular part here, which just go below uh, the plasma uh, output, uh, I forgot them as well. Then this model, I just forgot to do some Boolean operation. Then um, it was way too much to uh, uh, trying to, to figure out a way to fix this model when it was printed, the best way obviously was to fix the model in ZBrush and then reprint the model. Uh, since I had to reprint the bottom part, this one. Okay, let, let's do a print. 
um, then everything has been uh, done in two uh, uh, print process, uh, which was, let me open the, the files uh, where you perform. Oops, sorry. Preform, preform, where are you? Uh, I, I will show you uh, Bazooka and Plasma, the, the model. Uh, let me see. Come on. Um, then. Let me load the file. Okay, then uh, these, uh, all these parts uh, were the one from, of course, uh, the top part, the plasma generator. Then you have uh, the main body part of the plasma. You have this cover which goes on top. The part, in fact, I, 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 sorry, I read it. And as you can see, you see, like I explained, when I printed this model, I forgot to do this opening here. And this opening here, and oops, sorry, and not the rounded, rounded part uh, just to go below the side uh, plasma uh, extractors. I don't know the name. Anyway, then I had to reprint that. And as you can see, I have quite some supports on my models, especially this one but no support inside of my model. Then you have a little bit of overhang, but it was not a problem if the model had some um, little bit of uh, not perfected printed areas inside of the model. Uh, I know by running the slicer, I mean, when I mean the slicer is not to slice the model, but just to see uh, when the progress of what the printer will do. Then uh, for each model separately, one by one, I'm checking always and always each layers one by one and to see if it, uh, I will have any kind of problems by printing my model, especially if there is some suction uh, cup or uh, if I have some overhangs or parts growing just without being connected to supports. Then uh, it takes a little bit of time, but it's always better to check all by yourself than trying to just um, uh, trust the software. In fact, Preform is doing a great job to add supports, but when you start to have complex models with a lot of small uh, uh, details, sometimes some support may be missing or can be slightly just uh, a few uh, millimeters or, or, or then less than millimeters just next to the, the, the part which needs to grow. And it can, with the Form 2, in fact, there is no problems. But since I, I learned with the Form 1 and Form 1 Plus, which was not permissive at all, I had to be very careful. Then now I'm very careful and I prefer again spending 10 extra minutes and checking my model than having a failure. Because a failure is of course a, a, a loss of time. You're losing your time and um, you have some quite some frustration. You need to clean uh, your resin tank for potential some, uh, some potential uh, cure resin. Uh, then and of course losing some money of, of uh, unused resin at this stage. Then that's why it's very important to, to prepare your model uh, very carefully. And as you can see, uh, I put everything on my build platform. I can put quite a lot of models at the same time. Uh, I have only 100 and let's say 60 milliliters of resin for everything. And the model I will show just after, it's in fact uh, um, the, the, the white, it's, uh, it's not heavy at all, not at all. And I have quite enough room to put all the electronics inside when I will find the time to, to work on the electronic. Um, then yes, uh, Xeno Shadow 99, this is Preform, which is not a 3D software to create. Uh, it's a software to prepare the print for the Form Labs printer, especially for the Form 2 uh, for me. Then in this software, you are uh, just uh, uh, organize, uh, doing the organization of your models, defining the orientation and having all of these uh, uh, supports to help your model uh, printing. And of course, some extra things. Then uh, this is for this one. Then the body, I think you remember the main one. No, I don't want to save. 
This is the one I launched uh, uh, when uh, during the last stream. Then all this part, and again you see this is uh, you have a big hole inside. Uh, I've been careful about having my support on areas where, uh, where it will be easy to send, uh, doing all the sending, and you will see that just after that, of course, it's very needed. And of course, at the end, I reprint these additions, <laughs> uh, which are the two parts that I had to, to reprint because of my mistakes. Then you see here, uh, which of course are quite some resin because just two of them are six, uh, 72 milliliters of resin. But uh, again, it's, uh, it, it was better. And also when I did my support, you see that uh, I had all this, uh, I have, sorry, all this support inside, which may be not uh, useful because when you are making the model growing like that, then which are all the layers the printer will print, if you, you see that you have a kind of continuity and the angle is quite not uh, important, it's not a high angle, then not a big overhang. Um, but you need to consider as well when you are printing that your model, each time a layer has been printed, you have the peeling system which unstick uh, the current uh, uh, layer and in fact the current print uh, from the uh, resin tank which have a silicone layer at the bottom if you remember for the last uh, stream I did. But this operation uh, uh, put some pressure in fact uh, on, on the model and your support will also be useful to keep your model in position without moving at all. Because if your model have just few support on the bottom, which could be enough for this model. The risk is for the more, I mean, the higher you are from the build platform, the more important will be the risk of having the top part of your model moving slightly. And then you may have some very small offset of layers, but enough to be not very nice and requiring requiring you, sorry, a lot of sending. Um, that's why it's important to add some, some, some support. And let me just edit this model, then I click on modify. And now in the software, you see, I, I'm able to uh, see all the, 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 the point which will connect uh, the model and the support and say, oh, I want to add one here and let's say one here. And why not here and here? Because the red areas, um, is a kind of a visual indicator saying that on this area you may lack some support and you may have some issues. And you see, I added these two supports and now I have less red. Then I can add two more. Then, okay, it's more secure. And obviously, when you are a beginner with 3D printing for SLA printing, um, whatever it's a Form 2 or another printer, uh, it's better to have a little bit more support than trying to remove as much support as possible, especially when you are trying because it's so easy to do mistakes because you just want to avoid one support say, oh, I will save some resin like that. It's better to spend more money in resin by adding few support than losing your print. Definitely, trust me, <laughs> uh, I, I learned that the hard way. And okay, then now I, I put this extra uh, um, support and the tip and I apply, sorry for my UI, which is mix uh, of mix of French and English. And now you see I had this uh, extra support, but as you can see, two things for me, which are a kind of problem, if I can avoid them, of course, that it adds this support here, but it also connected the support to the other side of the model. It means that when I will want to remove these supports, I will need, of course, to send this area here because I have four points, four connection points for this support. Then uh, already some, some parts to send, which are obviously in an area which is just in, in uh, not that big, not easy to send. And more important, because of these two supports, it's not able to connect to the base of uh, your model, then it's, try, it's just trying to connect to the parts, I mean, somewhere. And this somewhere is, of course, on the other side of the model. It means that for these four points, I will need to have, in fact, eight points to send on an area which is not very easy to send. That's why it's very important to try to find uh, just moving sometime your, your, your points a little bit will give the strength needed to your model and avoid uh, having this part to send. Uh, it's, it's very important. And you see it was exactly the same on the other side. And you see I added also this one as well. And this one is connected, not the build platform, but directly to the model itself. 
And you see sometimes Preform is smart enough to go, oh, I'm trying to connect there to there, then using the hole on your models, your openings, to add your support. But sometimes it doesn't work at all. And that's why when I'm building my model, I'm considering as well, I mean, I'm considering the, um, the printing process to be sure that I will have a success uh, in terms of printing, but also I need to anticipate the sending aspect because sending is taking quite some time and you need to have the tools and I will speak about the tools just later. Sorry, let me just look at um, the chat. Um, uh, SpecDrive, yes, the software in fact is uh, is available for anyone. If you go to uh, uh, formlabs.com and you go in the software section, you can download Preform. Then you can already prepare your model or just looking about how it's working. And trust me, it's it's very informative to know how 3D printing is working for SLA. Uh, it, it's it's I mean it's a great way to learn how to prepare your model and anticipate trying to find a way to anticipate all your overhangs and slicing your models from from it's it's very very important. Um, then in terms of resin, just a total because someone it was yeah bazooka plasma uh, 60 milliliters and 72 for that one. Uh, let me open the other one. Uh, 72, come on, uh, one, let's say yes, um, uh, 230 and And let me remove this one because I reprinted and I forgot to remove one. Uh, yes, because I forgot to remove the other one, the second part I did. Then for total, if you don't do a mistake, it's it's 300 milli, oh, roughly 300 milliliters of resin. Then um, if you, let me take my calculator. Um, Okay, 333. Yes, it's roughly $50 of resin to uh, print your model. Uh, if I'm considering the price of the resin, uh, which is, uh, if you optimize things, if you're hollowing everything, Sorry, this is not a lot at all. Of course, you need to consider the price of electricity, the printer itself, the IPA to clean everything and some tools. But if you want to do a high quality props, it's perfect. And in terms of quality, you remember I printed that at uh, the um, medium quality resolution, which is uh, 50 microns per layer. And I can go up to 25. And you will see in the photo just just now, uh, that it's not very uh, useful to switch to uh, a higher resolution. And of course, if you have some questions about 3D printing and, and, and the Form 2 and uh, Preform, just ask, there is no problem. Um, um, uh, Doug, uh, yes, you can download the software of Preform. You can save, but there is no way to export what you're doing for, let's say, another printer. It's really specific to Form Labs. Um, to the form to printer. Uh, and you see, yes, the prototype is quite big. Uh, as a reminder, it's 300 millimeters by 150 millimeters uh, for the, the final model. Okay, now let me switch to some photos. Uh, okay. You see then, uh, it was of course during the, the printing process and uh, I saw that on forum and I, I was wondering myself is, I don't know why this, uh, this um, resin, this uh, gray V3 uh, resin I'm using, this tank, I don't know why, but there is a lot of foam, uh, foam, foam uh, for this model, but I know by expand that it's not uh, not important at all. It's printing perfectly. Uh, then uh, you see at the end of the print, uh, then it was the main body part, the bottom part, etc. was uh, 
uh, pretty quick, but uh, quick and 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 quality was pretty good. But you see quite a lot of foam for for that one. Um, and now directly straight out of the printer. Um, sorry, this is a mess in my kitchen. Um, what you see behind is um, the cleaning tool. Uh, the printer is provided with uh, a cleaning solution, which is just uh, um, two uh, big cup uh, to uh, to put uh, IPA, um, this um, isopropylic alcohol, if I'm not wrong about the name in English, uh, which is used to clean the resin. Because when you are printing, uh, the, the laser is just uh, curing the resin exactly where you need to have, I mean, for each layer, one by one. But the model is printed directly inside of this liquid resin. Then you have all of this liquid resin uh, all over the model and on the build platform. Then the next step, is to clean all of this resin to remove it uh, inside of this IP alcohol. And sorry, this is close, but you have two uh, two big cups. Uh, this one is in fact the first stage where you are shaking your model uh, for roughly 10 minutes. So it is to remove the big part of the liquid resin. And when it's done, you move to the other one, which have a cleaner IPA, uh, just to finish to do this, uh, um, uh, just to do the finalization of the cleaning because the IPA is, is very clean. And then uh, it's just to uh, remove a, a little bit of extra resin, which um, may have been not removed for, from this first stage. Because the first stage, the IPA is really, uh, uh, I mean, you have a lot of resin mixed inside and it's really to do the big part of the cleaning, not the finishing. And when you're done, you can, I mean, you just need, you see this tool here, uh, sorry, you don't really see it. In fact, you put it just below. Let me go back here uh, in, in the software. And you see you have quite a little bit of angle on this area. And then you use this tool here, which is kind of flat tool, just to put below and you, you turn uh, on the side. Uh, let me, sorry, I don't see the screen. Uh, you, you turn like that and it will just make the, the, the model pop, uh, pop out of the build platform and it's so easy to remove from the build platform uh, that uh, for me it's, to be honest before in the past with the form one and form one plus uh, cleaning the, the the print was kind of annoying because you did not have this system to hold the platform you have this kind of system to clean your model not this tool the support at that time was not as uh, uh, efficient as they are now and sometimes they say, oh, I need to print, but oh, I need to clean my prints, which was for me a kind of pain. And now this system, it's so easy. I don't put uh, IPN resin everywhere, a little bit, but you see, I put this uh, this uh, this paper, I don't know the name, sorry, this uh, uh, cleaning paper all around just to avoid some spilling of resin. But most of the time, this is very clean. And I do that in my kitchen. And um, it, it's working um, Pretty fun. <laughs> yes, form labs. <laughs> um, okay, let me switch to the next one. Um, do, 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 then you see, if you look just closely, that uh, it's quite sticky and some form again. But just at this stage, you see that the model is quite clean, uh, and it was quite clean. And now this is just directly straight out of the cleaning process where I, I removed um, just the support, but no sending, nothing. Sorry, this is a cell phone photo, then it's not the best quality, but you see a little bit, really a little bit of layers. But when I say little bit, really a little bit, when you need to look at that. And of course, as soon as we put one layer of paint on top of that, you won't see the layers anymore. It means that for this kind of model, big model like that, the 0 0.5, uh, um, so 50 micron, sorry, uh, resolution is way enough, really way enough. And another reason why I'm not trying to print at 25 microns, even if I'm doing that for figurines, what I will start just after this uh, uh, this part of the Caloran uh, lightsaber, um, is because the more layer you have, of course, the longer it will take to print, the shorter the lifespan of your build platform, uh, build, uh, sorry, your uh, resin tank will be because the silicon layer will be burned more and more by uh, the laser. And uh, of course, if you have very small layers, it means that you may have more mistakes by the software, but having uh, just small parts growing without being being able to be, uh, sorry, without being connected to a support. Then it's a lot of 
preparation to be sure that your print will be fine. To be honest, uh, it's not because it's sponsored by Formlabs, but really because it's my printer. Um, I paid my printer with my own money. It's not Pixelogic, it's not Formlabs. In fact, with Xavier, my co-worker, we bought the printer uh, together. I had no failure at all so far with the printer, which is for me something big because with all my other printers, I had on regular basis failure, whatever it's especially with FDM, which is not sticking or quality or support uh, with other SLA that some support issue, thing like that. Nothing with the form two. Then for me, this is something I mean, ultra positive. And then you see, obviously, the quality is there. Um, okay. Then now let me just show you some some extra photos. Um, this one I tricked a little bit because I clean everything, including the build platform, and I put back <laughs> uh, my prints on the build platform just to show you that uh, uh, all these parts. And um, it's very, very clean. Uh, you see, if I, I'm zooming in, zooming in, sorry, you see a little bit of layer there. But I mean, this size is something like um, four times the size of my print. Then when it's at, at the real size, you don't see them. I mean, yes, with the light a little bit, but again, a little bit of sanding and then more important, a little bit of paint on top of that and you will see nothing. Uh, I will show the print just after. Um, do, 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 do. Like that, then you see uh, uh, all the support, and uh, you see for this model, which is uh, a part of um, the, the, b the bottom part of the hilt, uh, I try to have all my support inside. Uh, and again, what I always trying to explain is the more parts you're doing, the more freedom you will have to define the uh, position of um, the support, and then to know where you will be able to send without losing your details. Um, um, then Doug is asking if I will prime the pieces with Tamiya Primer, which is very expensive, and then paint colorize. Um, not for this one because um, uh, I will do like the Caroline helmet. I won't need to have any kind of primer with that because I know that uh, my sanding is good enough and the paint is a little bit thick and I will put multiple layers and it will be thick enough to unify the, the, the small variations. Um, for the Kylo Ren helmet I did in my previous project, uh, I printed 100 microns and yes, for some big parts, uh, I don't have the time, but I should have paint and prime uh, to level more things. But for this one, to be honest, there is no need at all. Okay, now let's speak about tools because, okay, it's, I'm sorry, I can't really show that with the, um, my webcam because it, it's taking a lot of room and I can't in my office. Um, when it comes to uh, um, doing the post-process, because a lot of people think about pre-process in the brush and then in preform and then printing, and then you have the post-process, which is obviously cleaning your model, and then just after, you need to remove this support. And removing this support, you can use any kind of, uh, of, uh, of regular uh, uh, cutting tools, uh, using some pliers and, and things like that, uh, utility knives. Um, but it's not only it's not always enough because you will need to uh, gluing some parts. You will need to uh, sometimes adding some putty just to, uh, putty 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 uh, to 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 hide some areas. You need to have some tools to clean. I mean to protect for painting, etc. etc. And you will see that almost almost all my tools are Japanese tools. Why? Because Japanese are just killers when it comes to. Um, these uh, hobby stuff, uh, especially for model kits. And I've been in Japan multiple times. And if you are a little bit interested in, in model kits or just sculpting things like that, you will just be crazy about everything they have. And uh, this is just uh, one of my uh, box for all my utilities. And I will show some of them. Uh, I have Gundam markers. I have uh, all these glues and etc. Uh, etc. Et then. What you see on screen is uh, uh, are all my uh, cutting tools, and um, this this one is the only one which is not coming from Japan. Uh, I think this one as well. Uh, is it my Tamiya or not? 
No, this one is no, this one is Japanese as well. Only this one came from Amazon, uh, uh, some regular tools. And you can say, you see that this tool, I, I don't know the name in English, uh, cutting tools. Uh, this one is something that you can find easily, but it's very similar to this one. And this was the, the name of this tool. The, the brand is God Hand. <laughs> and obviously, there are really tools from God <laughs> when it comes to cleaning stuff. Uh, and of course, this one are regular uh, uh, um, utility knife uh, cutters. Uh, but I really love this flat uh, blade like that. When you have some support and you want to clean, it's better to push like that and trying to to, to use the, the other one, and even if I have multiple blades. And for me, what is very important is, of course, these tools. Why they are so good is they are very small, but the bottom part is very flat. Then when you are cutting your, your model, you are cutting really, really close to your model, reducing at the maximum the need of sending. Of course, you need to send, but a little bit, very, very few, and, and they cut very very nicely so problems are very fragile and also i'm using these tools which are a bit like utility knives but more bigger parts and also to remove some support where it's too complicated to use this kind of tool especially because this is thin and if you have some rounded areas if you are using the um, this big flat blade it can be a problematic and in fact this tool and this one are the same and it's great if you want to carve a little bit uh, your print and this is why i love using uh, resin uh, printers is because you can work as hell <laughs> uh, like hell sorry um, uh, the resin when it's done while fdm is just a pain and i will don't say slang words but uh, I really hate working with FDM when it's come to doing post process. While resin and uh, SLA is really, really uh, uh, something great. And you see this this uh, tool; it's very, very flat. And you see from my finger, it's quite some um, very small, but very good. And this one, I really love this tool. It's uh, it's cutting. I mean, it's very sharp, very, very sharp. And uh, you can also I don't know to name that, but you can make it sharp again by using kind of stone. I don't know. Uh, uh, Sunning Stone, I don't know the name. Uh, it's something like $15, which is quite expensive for such tool, but it's really worth it. And now this is some extra tools. You can find some other brands which are doing that. Um, then Mr. Surfacer, 50, uh, 100, and I have uh, 1,000, uh, 1, and I have also 1,200. Uh, it's a kind of liquid putty, which is great if you, you can use a pencil and you can slightly uh, uh, adding some putty very uh, uh, in a very accurate way, which is great when you remove too quickly some support and you have small holes. Or if you want to have two parts that you will connect together and you want to have a continuity, it's really fantastic. And I'm so fed up about not being aware of that earlier. And what you see just on the side is masking tools. You know masking is, perhaps you know of that. Uh, oops, sorry. So perhaps you know that, which is masking tape, which one, this one is also a Tamiya one. Um, this masking tape is a kind of, of scotch tape that you put on, on your model to protect from painting or gluing or whatever. And this is very convenient uh, because when you are unsticking this masking tape, uh, there is no no glue, remaining glues or thing like that. It's really, really good. The problem is, of course, this is a tape, then it's not very flexible when you have some rounded areas. Since then, there really is something which is thinner, but more flexible. I didn't try it yet. And then this masking sole and uh, masking sole are uh, then the same thing, but as a paint. It's a kind of plastic thing, which, which is very flexible. You mix that and with a pencil, um, you just apply some uh, this paint on your model and you wait it to dry and once it's dry you can simply just paint on top of that and when it's done you can remove that just very easily like a kind of, of rubber that you are removing from your uh, your model or you can even dissolve it with water and you have two of them the neo is the first generation and the sol r is the second generation the problem of the neo that it have a lot of solvent inside and it can kill your underlying resin uh, underlying painting if you are using it on top of an existing paint then i'm using mainly the sol r now and to finish, 
my also uh, God Hand tools uh, that I really love that. Uh, if you already watch my presentation about the 2B figurines, uh, I explain a little bit how it's working. Uh, these are sanding uh, sponges, uh, small thin one, you have different uh, grits, then from uh, 120 up to uh, 10,000, if I remember. I don't have this one. Uh, but to be honest, for 3D printing, having between 120 to 1,000 is way enough. And why I love that? Because this is very, very flexible. And now let me show you that on uh, with the bigger uh, like that. Then you see this God Hand Tools. Uh, you have a kind of protection on top. And when I received the first one, I say, for what? And yeah, for what protecting? Of course, this is very expensive. It's not very cheap uh, stuff, but it's very good. You have a small screw here if you want to keep a kind of, I don't know, half a millimeter for the opening for whatever reason. Uh, it's very handy, but you see, compared to my hand, it's very, very small. Uh, but if you are working with support or if you're doing model kits, uh, I don't know, you're doing Gunpla, I mean Gundam stuff. Or, or right now, I'm building my uh, uh, Falcon, Millennium Falcon from Bandai. A 172 scale then which is a, a big one I mean this kind of tool is really just perfect then why you have this protection is you won't see that but the blue one here of course you may not see here uh, but uh, you have one side this one I just broke the tip of uh, the cutting part then I can't use it I can't using it anymore for removing my support because I'm always using the tip that I'm using more for my model kits and the other one just for, for the tips. Uh, and that's why <laughs> I put it back. Um, okay, then just going back to these tools. Uh, and you see this one like that. Uh, let me put my hand like that. You see, I have, you have multiple sizes. You are very small and you have then uh, bigger ones like that. Come on, you see, like this. And it's very, very convenient because this one is not as sharp as the black one, which is here. You see, this one is very, very sharp, very thin, but you need to uh, to make it, to resharpening it, I don't know to say that uh, uh, quickly, but it's a very great tool. Then I'm using a mix, of, a mix of both. And you see this one is the same as the other, but the blade is rounded. Then it's better to carve. And if you want, to, I don't know, to add some scratch on, on your print or thing like that, this tool is great. And uh, what is great is you have this kind of protective, this is in aluminium, this is really metallic part. Everything is in metal. It's very sturdy, um, very good quality. I really, really love that. And I also have this one. I didn't explain this one. It's just a carving tool. This is very, very thin uh, tip, but very strong. Then if you want to add some scratch and, and carving your resin, it's working fine. Again, something expensive. Um, do, 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 do. Then this is all for the tools, and like I said, you have this kind of uh, of stuff. Now I have quite some tools, and now the print by itself. Sorry, it's not as I didn't do the assembly yet because I don't have the time. Then you see, this is the main body part, like that. I send my model for almost everything. I remove, in fact, all the uh, the support marks. But I left some marks, which I did in the brush. You don't really see them in the webcam, on the webcam, I'm sorry, uh, like that. And you see this part, which I had to redo, like this, because it's going that way. And you see it's fit, it's, it, it fits perfectly. And because I did two parts, I will be able to paint this one separately than this one. This is another reason why you print in multiple parts. Then you have the button, which go uh, there. Sorry, let me look at that. See, like this. And I have a small gap, in fact, inside uh, if I really want to use that as a real button. Uh, you have on top uh, this part, uh, which is uh, uh, the plasma uh, uh, stuff. And you see, I have a hole uh, inside. 
as well. And that's why you can see oh, like this. Uh, because again, I want in the future being able to remove this part and putting a real blade with all the electronics to do a real lightsaber with LEDs inside. And this is the same for the side. I can put them here like this, etc. Uh, then just the bottom part, then the body itself. Uh, then you see, I just send everything and you may see some marks because of the sending. Uh, oh, I have a hole here. Ah no, this is just the light. Ah yes, I forgot to send a part. You see, I forgot just to send. I don't know if you see that a little bit. You see this kind of this uh, clip, then it's going uh, perfectly uh, not on the other side. Like this, and because this is a separate part, I'm able, I will be able to paint it uh, as a separate model. And then you have below this one and the cap. Then I can put the cap, which is now fitting perfectly. And you said, like, as I told you before, I wasn't able to do something like that. You see, this is the uh, uh, part which are not good at all. Then <laughs> no way to <laughs> I can't put it, uh, put it in uh, then like this. And now I'm able to, to add that. And you see, you have the bottom part and you can put on top like this. Of course, it needs to be glued, but uh, this is a lightsaber before the painting. Uh, of course, it needs to have some glues, but I have enough room again if I remove the bottom part like this. You see, it's a big hole. Of course, less resin to be printed, faster print. I have quite some marks on multiple locations, which I did during the print process or that I just added at the end with my tools directly. Um, then that's all for the lightsaber. Um, then uh, for the cost, I replied in fact to this question earlier. It was uh, roughly just for the resin itself, $50 of resin. Uh, it's, I'm using the regular resin, not a specific resin. Then the cost is uh, in euros, and I think the same in dollars is one hundred seven sixty nine dollars for the uh, one liter of resin. And uh, and then uh, because it was just to print in uh, medium resolution, uh, you, you are using I don't know uh, uh, twenty percent of a resin tank in terms of lifespan. Then uh, I can print few more lightsaber and in fact i will reprint it because again i need to send it to uh to form labs for the roadshow and i want to have one of course for me then uh, i need to reprint everything okay uh, no more questions about that before switching to another project